This is to catch a predator's most insane person. And the reason I say that is because at the end of this, his backstory is revealed. And if it's true, genuinely, this is the craziest story I think I've ever heard. Like, it surpasses the Lord of the Rings, Iron Man, and also uh, the Swedish chef's origin story. I don't know if I even believe it, but stay till the end and uh, make your own mind up. Because I don't know if this is true, genuinely. This guy is to catch a predator's weirdest, wildest dude by a country mile. And the reason besides that is because he does not give up on his lies. I've seen a lot of to catch a predator. I've been addicted to the series for weeks now. I've seen a lot of people come in and walk out that door and get tackled by the police. It's a taser shot. <laughs> But never have I seen someone be so committed to their lies that I had to bust out the whiteboard just to write down all of his excuses, I swear. This dude lies and does not let go of them. And it's almost hard to track them, so like I said, I've got down a board of them. Chris Hansen almost got broke this one because he couldn't break this dude he comes in he walked for hours he has a glass of milk in his bag in the boiling hot sun he's coming to do what he says is an interview at 11 30 p.m and at no point does he flinch or think oh this is stupid he is the world's greatest worst horrible lie i forgot his name oh yes it's jean pierre michael weird weary too many names just pick one son and, hey by the way quick plug uh yes i'm in my new apartment and you know what i will get to keep my new apartment if you subscribe to my new channel leo on the channel we do crazy things like adventure every week and some of the upcoming videos we have is going into vr hiring a whole go-kart course out and donating to charity and building a whole lego house we're on our way to glory did a yes i'm in the kitchen and bitchin yeah bitchin my home is still flooded and that is very sad but if you'd like to cheer me up you can subscribe or follow me at 16 leo underscore on my instagram that way you can message me new ideas like this one by the way if you haven't watched any of my other to catch a predator stuff consider doing that but if you don't to catch a predator is a series that ran on nbc dateline back in the day it was run by uh chris hansen go ahead and take a seat but I'm not gonna do this. Take a seat, right over there. Who used to bust people who would come in looking for underage boys and girls to develop relationships with. Inappropriate, illegal, and EDP. All words that come up when I think about this stuff. But nobody has been so committed to the lies than Juan Pierre. What? Michael Weary. God, that's too many names. That's like two people combined into one. The following contains mature and graphic subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. Oh my god, the hat. I, I need a hat like that. One second. Alright, I'm back. This is uh, how you know that I'm ready to meet someone. <laughs> this next man also has a criminal record. He's 48-year-old Jean-Pierre Michael Weary. God, damn, he's 48. This is too old to be doing this. I mean, any age is too old to be doing this, but like, 48, dude. You've had too much life experience to think, what can I do today? Oh, yeah, I'm gonna ruin my life and try and ruin a, ch a child's life as well. That's like too much, man. It's too, too much. He has a conviction for uh, an assault with a deadly weapon that went back to, I believe, 1981. He was convicted and sentenced to three years in prison for rape. And in 2000, he was also sent to prison for failure to register as a sex offender. God damn, so he's got a rap sheet prior to coming here. This guy is like literally no joke. And I know that it's really easy to goof on these fools, but every now and again, you look at it and you're like, that's a dangerous human being. The fact that he's looming the streets in a weird hat at 11.30 at night, trying to lure people, I would say into his house, but I don't even know if he has one, lure people into to their own homes. It's dangerous. Despite being a convicted rapist. Okay. Online, he told the decoy. Sorry, Chris, you can't just walk past the. <laughs> what are you making nerf noises for? <laughs> is World War II, bitch. <laughs> or oh, is, is this like a DJ set that he's doing like to lure the kids out? I love you. You love me. Photographer promoting such films as Kindergarten Cop and some gay porn films. What? 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 what is, why? How is that such a no? That's he said it so normally. Kindergarten Cop, gay porn. Those are not 
It's in the same ballpark. Chris, it's not like you can just say those two things and they like mesh together. Then he tells the decoy he can help launch the boy's modeling career. But there's a catch. I want to shoot shots that'll promote you. I want to do the sag shots. Sag shots is not like saggy balls. It means Screen Actors Guild, I know. So you can have your SAG card, which you must have if you are ever going to model. Real modeling is good to great, might pay, might even land you an acting career. So is porn. Porn is more fun if you see what I mean. Nice. 48 years old, trying to lure 13 year old boy. Wow, there's a lot of things blurred out at the bottom there. When you say you want to do you want to have me or are you or me both? God damn, this sounds like a dirty McDonald's menu. Like, would you rather have a boop, 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 or a big boop in your boop with a large boop, medium size? He writes, how can I promote someone I never had lots of hot sex with? That's the greatest line of it. That is a fantastic line. God, did Harvey Weinstein steal that from you? How can I promote someone that I've never had lots of hot sex with? It's some, something that HR people were born for. Like, this is why HR exists, because of lines like this. <laughs> How can I promote you if I haven't done you? That's not an excuse, I just want to write that down. How can I promote you if I haven't had hot sex? I'll tell you what, man, my managers would be in a different position if this was, this was true, and that position would be doggy style. <laughs> there he is, pulling out like it's a dog or something. <laughs> 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 You out there, man? Oh, I thought it was the sprinkler. John Pierre Michael Sprinkler. Then come on in, buddy. Oh, man. It turns out you wanted to make me wet in many other ways, huh? <laughs> That's that hot sex. I, I saw the... the I didn't know that the optimal body shape was Shrek, but when I think about it, yes. Yes, it's 48-year-old white Shrek. That's my favorite type of hot sex, white Shrek. Oh, did you? Come on now. Come on, you gotta love it. This is the man who's like talking all that game. Ladies, it's like when you hear a dude say he could do all the stuff and then you look at him and you're like, really? And then he gives you one of, oh. He picked his leg up, his knee up when he walked over. He, he didn't want to disturb the gut. That is something, man. And when you see him come up the driveway, he's got a backpack and a hat and he looks like a hiker. And he's weary. He's Michael weary. <laughs> I see what you did there, Chris. I don't even know if you see what you did there. So Michael proceeds to try and run away as soon as he comes in. He doesn't like the vibe. He knows something's up. And as he proceeds to try and leave, Chris has to stop him. And he brings out the transcripts and everything else. He gets him to sit down. But this is where the lies begin. And they do not end. Why were you in such a hurry to go up on the other side of the fence? Oh, nothing. I thought I was looking for somebody. That's all. I'm sorry. And who were you looking for? John Pedersen. Right. There it is. John Pedersen. A random dude that he made up. This is the Olympian of lies. John Pedersen. Oh, I was I was trying so hard to think about the name. Jordan Peterson. Is, this is Walmart Jordan Peterson. John Peterson, right there. That's who I was thinking about. Huh? I was going to talk about some business. And what business was that? I'm going to try to do try to find a job somewhere. And I heard about John Peterson. Try to do try to find do 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 try try to do a job to try and try and do John job. Peterson. Trying to pet your son. How old is he? It's great. This is good. So he's looking to do business with John Peterson. That's what we got so far. I heard there was a guy named John Peterson in the area. That's all I know. In the area? In this area. That's all. And why did you come to this house looking for John Peterson? It's like Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. You just walk into everyone's house. I just heard someone was in the area. I, pff, I just wander in and outside people's homes. I don't just wander into people's homes. I do the... <laughs> Someone has to answer me for. I had a phone call. A phone call? Yeah. From? Um, I, I, in fact, I don't actually know the guy besides the fact that his name is, I don't even remember his name. Okay, so he had a phone call from a guy whose name is, I don't remember his name. <laughs> All right, so so far, John Pedersen to business, but the reason he was even here was because of a phone call from a random dude, which is, you know, as soon as you get a phone call from a random dude, you automatically answer it, put your hat on, and you start, you know, trekking for hours. It was about five hours, but I've been walking. Five hours. How far did you walk today? How far did I walk? Where did you come from? His mom. 
I keep him uh, from the mall down the, down the road. That's not what he was asking at all. He walked for five hours. I'm just still John Pedersen. Five hour walk. Five hours for that John, for that JP. God damn. After getting a phone call, would you walk five hours? Even if it was my family member and they were in trouble, I'd be like, I'll jog for 10 minutes, but that's it. I started off in Claremont. Claremont? Yeah. And how far away is that? I have no idea. Don't know. So you took a bus? I took a bus part of the way. And walked the rest? Yeah, I was just walking up the road because I was looking and I was told that, you know, there's a John Pedersen that has a construction company. That had it. So you were just walking down the road I and you thought that... He's a, he's, he does look like a construction bolt. He's built like a construction paper. So it's a construction business. All right. Construction. He walked five hours to be in construction, which shows his dedication and also his willingness to display trust, accepting a phone call from a random dude. This is, we have some great qualities from this John Michael Weary, whatever the hell his name is. A young man on the phone. A young man on the phone. And how did you reach this young man? And he had called me. He had called you, just out of the blue? No, I think he had my number. And how did he get you? I don't know how you got my number. Right, okay. So again, this is just, it's going into great territory. He got called out of the blue from a young man who just guessed his number. You know how hard it is to guess someone's number? You know how fucking, it's gotta be one of the hardest things ever. If you just pick out your phone, you know, dial some numbers. Here, let me try. All right. Object advises that the mobile number you have dialed has been disconnected. You mean to tell me that was a number at some point? Well, I just dialed some random person. I guess it could happen. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but it's, he guessed, guessed his number, which makes this fate. So now we have fate. This is a religious thing. He told me about a guy named John Pedersen that lives in this neighborhood. I had an address. I found out where this neighborhood was. I walked. I looked for work. You couldn't just call John Pedersen on the phone? No, what are you talking about, Chris Hansen? He can't call people when other people are calling him. You can't make a call when you received a call. Are you kidding me? His phone's always busy. And because his phone's always busy and he wants the job, he walked five hours. He stayed on that phone for five hours, not making calls, not taking calls either, because he wanted this job in construction. So you thought you were going to come to a job interview at this no. home at 11.28 at night? The greatest part of this whole interview was just said, right? It just got slipped in as if this wasn't the funniest joke of all time. This man decided to come to an interview at 11.20 p.m. And he thought this was the best excuse he could use was to come to a job interview to a random person's house at 11.20 p.m. He couldn't think of anything better than I have a job interview and I decided to turn up. At 11.20 p.m. Anything would have been better than this. My car broke down. I don't know. Just admitting, ah oh, man, sir, I find the boy sexy. I know it's wrong, but it's still less wrong than coming to an interview at 11.20 p.m. because that's the biggest lie of all time all of a sudden. Are you kidding me, John? What's his name? Jean. I was gonna leave a note. You're leaving now. Ah, okay. This is, I can't. I'm sorry. Every two seconds, I'm stopping because there's just more to the lore. The lore. He was going to leave a note. Five-hour walk to leave a note. A man who has a phone that can receive calls walked five hours to leave a note at someone's door whose address he didn't have. This is this is a screen. Steven Spielberg, wake up. Jean-Pierre Michael Weary, you better be weary of him. This is the greatest horror movie of all time. Unbelievable. Where else, what else is happening? And what's your email address? An email address? Yeah. The answer email address like a prehistoric Neanderthal would answer the same question. Email address? Email address? Mindo don't know it. Really? The way that he looks like he's in like a kid's uh, daytime episode? Email address? What's that? <laughs> this dude is just trying his hardest not to get busted yet again and probably go back to jail where his friends are like, oh, you're back, Gene, Michael, whatever. You're back already. Take a seat on my lap, on my dick. I don't care. On the 31st of December. How about on January 4th? Michael, did you use it then? I haven't been on the computer in a while. Yeah, I, I honestly, I might even believe this dude. The way that he dresses, looks, and acts. I don't know if he's used a computer. I mean, I do know he's used a computer because that's how he's doing all his dirty work. But he looks like a guy who doesn't even know how to use a computer. 
He looks like a guy who would get caught very easily than try to lie his way out of it. And so he is. Why don't you just tell me the truth? Chris Hansen was like, it's a lot, e a lot easier if you tell me the truth. This guy was like, yeah, why would I take the easy way out? Life's been hard to me. I'm going to be hard right back to it. I want the hard way out. And he continues lying. It's like not even an option for this dude. You want me to take the easy way out? No, I'm gonna keep lying, trying to wrap my own brain, make up all these convoluted stories instead of just, just tell the truth. This guy's not gonna do it. You willing to send me a couple good news? At this point, Chris Hansen is just like, okay, well, genuinely, I gave you the option to take the easy way out. You're not admitting to any of this. And he pulls out the transcripts and starts reading them. How do you think John Michael Lyre will react? How do you think this man would take this? You are one sexy boy. How tall? Give me dimensions, please. I don't know what that refers to. It's just his face. Him looking like, huh? Huh? It doesn't sound like me. I don't know about that one. Cuz? Huh? What? Sexy boy. I ain't, I, I ain't in a sexy, oh boys, I, you see, what? No, dog, please. <laughs> you are a really cute 13 year old and I love what I saw. Wow. I need to see you in person, talk. It's just the, I didn't, he's so blatantly stupid. That it, like, I know it's not funny, but it's hilarious at the same time. It's like, have you ever heard someone incriminate themselves so easily? That's, you know, like, imagine getting someone being like, Whoa, that's the spicy cocaine. Like, just getting that, like, on camera or something and being like, okay, well, we got him. In the weirdest and most honest way. You are a sexy 13-year-old underage guy. <laughs> Awesome! I love it! Great! Let's do illegal stuff, guys! Pretty much this guy. By the way, why wouldn't I want to see you and taste your beautiful body? Make love that's to not, you. you are a gorgeous 13-year-old girl. That's not my style. <laughs> that's not my style. I wonder how that's gonna hold up in court. Um, how would your client like to plead, sir? That's not his style? Alright, well, he's still going to jail. How's that for style? Sounds about right, Your Honor. Are you a photographer? I think about a long time ago I was. I did some photography. You think about it a long time ago. Well, I don't consider myself a photographer. No, that's... Uh, Chris, you need no. to slow down. That's a fucking fantastic answer. Are you a photographer? About a long time ago, one day, maybe. Have you taken a picture? I could have. I definitely took a video that was one frame. So a picture then. It was a video, but short. It was a still video. So a picture. I was never a photographer, but pictures happened to be on my camera one day. And I may have click the button, but I was not a photographer. I don't think so. He's like dancing around everything that Chris is trying to throw at him. I know it's been a long time. I'm a promotional photographer. <laughs> oh my God. Do you consider yourself a photographer? Nah, that's not my style. And then immediately after he has the transcripts being like, I'm a pr promotional photographer. This is this is one of those caught you red handed moments, dude. The, the more your eyebrows do this and the more you act surprised doesn't actually help the situation. Even if you were Leonardo DiCaprio in the situation, your acting skills would not be on par with the amount of damage that you are now going to be in. You know, you're in trouble. I know some people that knew that of me. Oh God, sorry, sorry, Christopher. I know some people that knew that of me. That's the most gangster shit I've ever heard in my life. Were you a drug dealer? I know some people who knew that of me. That's, what the fuck even is that? What? How do you even like respond to that one? Some people might have uh, interpreted the situation as such. Inherently so, it seems to be the case that a lot of people construe the thing that I do to be that. This guy is playing checkers and chess and losing both. What am I doing? Did you ever do any promotions for Kindergarten Cop, the movie? I saw the movie. I know some people that have seen me with I know some people who've seen me with the movie. How do you even go, like what even happens at that juncture? Imagine saying, have you seen the movie Pulp Fiction? And then your friend is like, I've seen people see me with the movie. Does that, like, it, it just creates like 20 more questions as to why you've answered like this. What are you hiding? What's wrong with you? Since Johnny hit your head on the pavement, you've been acting different. Why your family left, explain. You know what I mean? There's a lot. That goes with answering questions in the way that this man does it. There's a lot of wrong decisions that led him to this position, but I'm so interested in what they are because he seems to be 
just not aware of himself. Uh, I've done some porno film. I've done some landscape photography. He just danced past that. Chris tried to hit him with the, you've done kindergarten cop. And also, gay photography. <laughs> gay, gay porn, porn photography. photography. And he's like, I have done some landscape photography. He just danced right past it, threw it under the rug, swept it. Let's not talk about it. And Chris doesn't even return to it. This guy is winning every battle that he's losing. When I was going to school. What, high school? What are you, you're 48. You didn't graduate till 30. 38? What? <laughs> you in class with 17 year olds? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. You're learning about history? You were in it, motherfucker. People, people, there's statues of you in World War One. People worshipped you back then, bro. When you were young, you were 50 then. Excuse me, 1999, when I left. End of story. But I've had some people that really didn't like me. I understood and I seen construction up here and I wasn't sure. Wait a minute, you know, you've seen construction or somebody told you about construction in your story? Shit. Oh, we're gonna just not dance past the fact that he said he got bullied in in school six years ago. He got bullied. I'm just gonna write that down. Bullied six years ago. He would have been 42 at the time. So he was in high school at 42, teaching people about history, talking about his life experience with it, uh, and somehow people didn't like him. Okay, carry on. Somebody calls you when? Today, yesterday, the day before. Oh, I guess it's been about a week. A week ago. Yeah. And it says, Michael, I know you're looking for a job. Actually, we talked about a number of things. Mm -hmm. And who's the person who called? Yeah, whenever you have to repeat a question that someone asks you, like, someone's like, uh, what was your name? And he's like, what was my name? Daniel? Daniel? This is a lie. People know you're lying when you repeat the question, giving yourself more time to formulate an answer that you probably couldn't say back because you're trying to think on your feet because you weren't made aware of the situation and you're not able to process this fast enough. Uh, yeah, I had about three different phone calls. Uh, Michael, who, uh... Michael is your name. Wait a minute, who, just be straight with me. Who called you to say there was a job and you should come here and leave a note? I came on just what he had told me about. I came on what he had told me about. What I wanted to come on was him. This is, why are you even here, dude? You're way too old for me. You're above the age of the age of consent. So get off, get off, step off, bro. Six years ago, I was in high school still. Okay, okay. Now, it doesn't matter to me, as long as you're in high school, you're legal. And I was in high school forever. So I'm always legal. I know, but I was told by, uh, on the bus, I was told by, um, actually it was a conversation on the bus, by, uh, by a Mexican who was riding the bus. He says, there's a cement company. I know about one of those companies I'm gonna try to check into. I know about some construction up here. Doesn't matter where he was gonna stay. Remember, it was a phone call, but now it also happens to be a guy on the bus, which means a guy on the bus either called him while sitting next to him or just told him and he either confirmed the story that there is indeed construction going on or he just randomly made more shit up. This is fantastic, dude. I'm really liking your lore. You should, they should employ you for Marvel Cinematic Universe because you do well there. Okay, so uh, Chris Hansen goes back to the emails and is like, okay, looks, your story clearly checks out. This makes perfect sense. But go back to the emails to which you said you have no idea about. Tell me about how the random transcripts happen. And he says he's never, he hasn't used this in six years. It's not him doing it. He, let's go back to the people who bullied him six years ago. They probably have access to his passwords, email, everything about his lifestyle. They're petty for six years. Maybe it's them. You know what I was or you know what somebody was using that account? I know you were. You know, I was. That's good. That's, that's not good. You are at a public library doing this? Out of all places you could have done illegal activity, you choose a library, the most sacred place of all time where you can get books for free. Maybe you could get yourself a book on how to do better crimes, bro. Or maybe be a better citizen. Are you kidding? You went to the library for this? It's like people don't think they get caught in a public place. Like, what are you doing? Has anybody went to Starbucks and just been like, I don't watch porn in a day. Like, is that the place for it? Maybe find a place. Maybe if you're gonna solicit evil activities, make enough money to do it in private. I'm not condoning this, but like a, a library, like that's low even for you. I do sometimes go and talk to a friend of mine in a public library. You know that Jay Can I taste is. your nuts? <laughs> that came out of nowhere. It was just like a bunch of silence. Chris Hansen's like, 
Can I taste your nuts? <laughs> Smacked him with that. And then this guy, like the absolute genius, he's like, this is his brain right now. He's like, let me go back to this. That's not my style. I don't, I don't taste nuts. First of all, if anything, I let him taste my nuts. Secondly, I would taste one nut and then swirl it around like a wine thing and then spit it back out. So I don't taste nuts, I savor. Thirdly, I use the shaft, brother. This is how I do things. That's not my style. You got the wrong guy. My style is different. You need to see me do the backstroke, maybe the breaststroke if you'd like. What do you mean by that? So you want to tell me the real story now? Or you want to go with what you got? Why start now, Christopher? 15 minutes into a 25 minute interview, this man is clearly not going to give up. He's like a pit bull that has latched onto something. It's over. He's like pit bull with a beat. It's over. Throw that away. Unbelievable. Let's see how far he goes. It's up to you. And when does the real story get me? <laughs> That's how you just like admit you're lying. And where does the real story get me? If I told you the truth, what would that do for me? I'm gonna continue lying, dude. This is one, more fun. Two, it provides everyone with the greatest entertainment of all time. Three, I get to stay on camera for longer. And I like that. Tell the truth. That sounds like something that you would do, Chris. Get the fuck out of here. I like lying. I like making up shit in my head. This is the only time my brain actually functions and activates. This is like me writing a screenplay live. You're forcing me to do it, Chris. When I go home, I'm gonna write a book. You know why that's not funny, guys? He actually wrote a book. I'm not joking. This is the only predator to actually have a book out. I tried to get a hold of it, and it is true, you can search this up. There is nothing about to catch a predator in the book, so it's not worth reading. I thought maybe I'd actually give it a read, but there's nothing there. He just is a, a very narcissistic person. Anyway. This is the communication that we have between somebody using your screen name and a young teen. And all of a sudden, you're here. You. Not someone else. Yeah, the likelihood, of course, of a guy. What he's suggesting is someone else replied for him and he just happened to be in the construction area and this is all one big setup. The uh, implication that this would actually be uh, happening is like if you hit and won the lotto twice and you scratch the winning, like, scratchy off with your nuts. Mm. It's very unlikely, you know? Your story doesn't make that much sense. Now, maybe I'm skeptical. You, you know, I don't know, but who, it doesn't I don't know who you are. God damn. I don't even know who you are dude i don't know why i'm telling you about all this john Pedersen, all this stuff i don't even know you i was trying to get here for the boat that leaves town in 20 minutes because the ferry is coming to get me i don't need to tell you nothing brother what this sounds like michael is that you were coming here to have sex with a 13 year old boy. oh hell no i'm trying i'm getting i got her phone on my, on my computer and on my phone what did he say? I had to beep that up. Oh, hell no. Dating what? 13 year old, I'm dating a woman. I don't know if they bleeped that part out. Oh, hell no. 13 year old, that's not my style. I, are you kidding me? I would date a woman if I could. Oh, that's not my style. Nuts in my face. That sounds like it's something somebody else. That's not my style. That's maybe your style. Random man in the home. Get out. I'm dating a young black girl. Did you say black girl? What? Why'd you have to throw that out? That was the most arbitrary. I'm dating a black a guy. A guy. I'm not a. I'm not a gay man. I'm a all inclusive straight man. And not only am I fucking someone, but she's black. Is that not cool or something? Some give, give me daps or something. I don't know. Found it. Not me. And if you were, if you were anybody having access to my record, you look at my record, you figure out that the only time I had any problems with anybody was a young woman. Unless you look at my adolescent stuff, and then I was an adolescent. So you got a record. That see, that's the craziest way I've ever heard someone talk about their rap sheet. I never had any problems with anyone unless you look at that one time about that one woman. But then I never had any problems unless you talk about my adolescence. But that was a different, I was an adolescent when that happened. So that all of that doesn't matter. So I technically haven't had, if you just forget about the woman, I haven't had any problems. And also forget about all of the adolescence in my life. Basically, if you if you from like yesterday to the day before, if you look at my life, I'm like clean. I'm guessing I do. You're guessing you do. Yeah, I have a record. Good guess. Good you know, you had a problem with a young woman. A long time ago. Do you do time for that? Don't you know? I'm asking you. Why are you asking? Well, you are in a house randomly lying about your construction work, trying to uh, bang someone who is illegally uh, young, so. 
That would be why. And the fact that you know what's happening at this point, because he knows that this guy clearly knows something about the situation. He chooses to still lie for almost zero reason now, but but he but he's he's still admitting the truth. The truth. Yes, I've done time for that. Straight up, I've done time for that. Straight up, straight up, dog. Straight up, I did. Straight up, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, yo, man, straight up, dude. Did time. Guy right here, Prison Mike. Mike, Prison Mike from the office actually made an appearance on T Cap right here. He was a well young woman. Ain't no kids in me. You motherfucker, of course there's ain't no kids in you. You trying to be in the kid? What's wrong with you, Michael? Everybody knows what's happening. Take those earphones off your brains, brother. You 48, doing time, doing crime. You're out of line, and it's not fine. You know, let me get my milk on my bag. Well, I just, just, I'd rather you didn't go in your bag. So. I mean, I, I'm, I'm almost finished catching. You have milk in your bag. You walk for five hours. You had milk in your bag. That shit goes off. Why not water or juice? What is wrong with you? It's like me eating muesli after I'm thirsty. What? Out of everything he said. Oh, he had milk in his bag the whole time? Had milk. God damn it, dude. What is wrong with you? My plan was because I'm desperate for a job. I had no money income. None. Okay, I can tell you where my desperation comes from. That's yeah, the only job you're desperate for is a blowjob, son. That's not a lie. Yeah, that's pretty true. That's true and yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. We've seen the transcripts. If you started telling the truth even now, you'd have some redemption. But it's almost over. The only thing truthful, I believe, is the milk in your bag. I'll be there as close to 11 as possible, so I will need your number so that I can call you when I'm near the bus. I will look for you, and we will destroy- Did he say I'll look for you? Because that's very clever. He's very clever at 11.20 p.m. He's more clever on uh, his- you know, texting than he is on his coming up with excuses at 11.20 p.m. That's that's not his strong suit. You are reading me something that somebody wrote. I'm sorry to hear that. Damn. You're reading me something that somebody wrote. That's gangster. That's that's not, I'm, I'm impressed with that one. Genuinely. That's, uh, that's impressive. That's like a murderer going up and being like, well, somebody died and somebody killed him. I'm sorry to hear that one. Like he fully removed himself from the equation of that situation. Somebody is clearly doing something illegal to somebody else and somebody's sorry about that. That's great. So I need exact bus stop near our place as I get off. I'll walk toward your street, so you also must tell me how to get to your bed from there. Well, I don't know about what everybody that this person has said to a 13 I never even met a 13 year old. Never even, he never even met a 13 year old. He doesn't even know what a 13 year old would look like. When he was in high school, everyone else was also 42. It's his high school. And he was population one. He was the teacher, the principal, the student, and the person in detention. Okay? He never met a 13. This guy doesn't know what the, He went 12, 14, 15. He skipped that number. He doesn't even know what that is. 13 year old? That's not my style. I don't even know what that is. The reason why I'm so curious about all this is that I'm Chris Hansen, Dateline NBC. We've been doing a story on computer vectors, adults who go online. Try Damn, so this is the only stone faced dude I've seen. Most people like get the cameras off me. Is this gonna be on TV? They get that embarrassed look on their face. They know that they've messed up and that it's beyond any sense of repair. This guy, once Chris Hansen said, I'm Chris Hansen with NBC and all oh, the cameras came out, he just looked down and like, I think he was preparing for some more lies because he just hasn't had enough. He just keeps coming back for more. I'm not doing anything. No, if there's not a Scott Harrison. I'm sorry. We're gonna have to write that one down, guys. At the end of everything, it went from John to Scott Pedersen. Just like a Pokemon. In the time it took to have this interview, the man evolved. He changed. A man changes, but not that fast. Scott Pedersen, from, from John to Scott. The Pedersen brothers. Instruction from the Pedersen brothers. So you never wrote down Scott Pedersen's name? Well, yes, and uh, Chris Hansen, he didn't write his name down because if he did, he would have remembered the name was John Pedersen and not Scott. But I guess when you're lying, you miss uh, pivotal details such as the name of the person who you're fake meeting to fake have a meeting to try and fake yourself out of a situation that is real and illegal. It's good. Oh, yes, of course. Put the hat back on and he jets out of there he maintained until the very end of the interview that he was just a dusty determined traveler 
who uh, came from a long ways away. Came from a long, long line of other people who did stupid shit. There's something you need to know. Please. I'm Chris Hansen. No, you're not. And uh, as soon as he leaves, they, the police come and they take him into custody to question him because uh, he is clearly someone who probably belongs back in prison. But now we're getting to the part that I wanted to talk to you about, to read to you. The end, and it basically goes over his life story and how he got to the point reaching this house. And it is the most insane thing I've ever heard in my life. So the story ends with Jean-Michael uh, Pierre Weary. He also goes by the name Damien. He gets booked and uh, he goes back to prison. Lots of people uh, say that these people cannot be reformed. I don't know, but I do know one thing. The story of how he got there is absolutely wild. I mean, it features him lying uh, about a guy's name who changes. He got five hours there. He's carrying milk in his bag. He went to the library to try and sex up someone underage, which is horrible. Got a phone call from someone he doesn't know, but it was a bus stop. Went to school six years ago, got bullied. And that's not his style. None of this is his style. And that's a great story. But when you hear his origin story, it makes you sad. It makes you wonder, was he gonna be the person he is because of the origin story? It makes you really think about how villains are created in this world. Now, prepare yourselves. Take a second, because this is seriously the craziest thing that I'm gonna read to you in a long time. You tell me if you think it's real and I will read it to you. John Michael Pira, Damien, was arrested during the Riverside, California sting on January 6, 2006. He was charged under California's three strikes law because of his criminal history. He was sentenced to 75 years to life in prison. That is one of the, if not the most harsh sentence on TCAP history. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's unbelievable. In 2009, his sentence was reduced to 50 years to life upon appeal. While in prison, he wrote under an autobiography under the Poseidonum Damien Latrigue. The book is called In for Life, Confessions of a Three Strikes Pre- Oops, I was gonna say predator, prisoner, same thing. It was released in 2017. The following information is extracted from this book. So you tell me whether he's lying. At an early school age, Weary was diagnosed with childhood schizophrenia. His father was an alcoholic and would often beat Jean-Pierre. At age 11, Weary was <clears throat> by his only friend, a 15-year-old boy. When Weary was 14 years old, he was charged with child <clears throat> and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. He had gotten two 13-year-old girls drunk and had <clears throat> with them. While being detained for a few days together with other juveniles, Weary taught a 12-year-old how to give OS. Are you following me so far? Because of this, Weary was charged with forced sodomy, oh my god, and sentenced to about two years in juvie. He served about one year before being transferred to a mental hospital. Weary was told by a psychiatrist that he has Asperger's syndrome and that he is not schizophrenic. At age 17, Weary was released from the mental hospital. His family did not want anything to do with him. Just after his 18th birthday, where he moved in with his previous psychiatrist and they became lovers. After being accused of theft, where he moved out, he became a prostitute. After about eight months, he moved back in with his psychiatrist. Where he begins studying to become a psychiatrist, but failing his classes. He also started smoking and selling crack. When he was about 23 years old, he shot a man in the neck with a gun. Weary was having a hallucination. The man survived, and Weary was convicted with assault with a deadly weapon and sentenced to three years in prison. The prison shot caller pumped Weary out in exchange for protection. Weary later fell in love with another inmate, and they became lovers. Weary started attending church meetings run by a member of the Manson family. <laughs> Woo! Weary decided he wanted to become a minister. When Weary was released from prison, he moved back in with a psychiatrist. He was soon sentenced to three years in prison after pleading guilty to <clears throat> the ex-girlfriend of a friend of his. He served about two years. When Weary was released, he moved back in with the psychiatrist. He became studying to become a Christian minister. At age 38, he fell in love with a 25-year-old woman in his Bible study group. They got married and moved to Ohio.
great. Where he started studying to become a medical assistant. When he was 42 years old, he was sent to prison for failing to register as a sex offender. His wife divorced him. While incarcerated, he did sexual favors for other prisoners. He was released in July of 05 after serving about five years. In 2006, he was arrested during the Dateline Sting operation after soliciting sex from an underage boy. In 07, Weary filed petitions regarding his imprisonments and civil rights. In 2016, he filed a new petition to have the court determine if his imprisonment is lawful. Included in his petition was a psychological evaluation conducted by a psychologist in 2009. The psychologist that Weary was having a psychotic process at the time of the evaluation. The psychologist recommended Weary to be reprimanded to a mental hospital for a period of time. Jean Michael Weary remains incarcerated to this day. God bless whatever this man's motives are. That is the story of the most wild predator I think I've ever seen in my life. I don't know what more you can say other than that is the craziest origin story that has ever happened and I don't know if it's so bizarre that it's true or this man is just lying out of his ass again. You tell me, leave it in the comments below. All I can say is this. If you're gonna tell the truth, please be honest. I think it's a great thing. I'm honest to a fault almost, but it serves me so well. On the other hand, if you're gonna lie, always listen to George Costanza from Seinfeld, who says this amazing quote. I'll leave you with this. It's not a lie if you believe it. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next episode. But she ain't even got an ass, she did a dash and bit a last, you know a dash and she